Hey, what's up guys? Craig here for The Tropical Tribe, a place where us plant nerds can come together to help each other grow our own patch of paradise. In this week's video, I'm gonna walk you around my tiny tropical styled garden in autumn. It's just starting to color up with all those rich oranges and reds, everything you'd expect in autumn, but while maintaining that tropical vibe. Tropical gardens don't just have to look good in the summer months. With the proper planning, they can look great in summer, autumn, winter, and spring. In this walk around, I'm gonna put up plant names, so maybe you'll find some tropical and exotic plants that will you'll be inspired to add into your tropical styled garden. I hope you enjoy the video, and don't forget, hit subscribe if you wanna join the tropical tribe. A tropical garden can still look lush, jungly and healthy, even in the middle of autumn. Let's have a look at some of the plants that are colouring up and keeping that tropical vibe in my tiny tropical garden. First up is my canopy plant, Rus Typhina, which is renowned for this flame red autumn colour. It looked absolutely stunning last year and I was worried it wouldn't do the same this year. But early signs look promising and all of my other exotic flowers are just picking up that autumn color. It's all about layers and planning. And a bit of forward planning this year has really paid off. The first plant that's coloring up underneath that orange canopy is my Isoplexus canariensis, otherwise known as the Canary Island Foxglove. This plant is an evergreen shrub that repeats flowers and it's the first time it's actually done this for me this year. It first flowered in spring and now it's absolutely covered in these orange spikes for a second flush. I wasn't expecting it so it's a pleasant surprise and somewhat of a happy accident because it combines so well with the rest of the orange flowers in this bed. Just behind it a coppery leaved ginger is blooming. This is Hedicium greenii and it's usually late flowering but it's worth the wait. This bright orange flowers look absolutely stunning on a late autumn day as the low sun skims across the garden and just illuminates all of these colours. And of course, my Salvia confertiflora, or Brazilian red sword salvia, is still flowering. This is exactly why I love exotic salvias. These red tiny flowers just pick up those red leaves of the roots behind perfectly. It's these small details in a tropical garden that I absolutely love. And again, I'd half planned for this to be the case, but it worked out much better than I could have ever thought. And right down low in the subshrub planting are my Empatians. This is the Oricoma bicordata hybrid that just has been flowering for months on end. This is a must have plant if you want constant color in your exotic and tropical garden and the orange looks great in this autumn color palette. You can see how well all of these plants are combining just to highlight those warm orange autumn colors. The garden still looks lush, it still looks tropical, but it is definitely an autumn garden. And this is the careful balance I wanted to get. A new addition is this Empathians Kilimanjaro. It's got these tiny flowers in that traditional exotic Empathian shape. And again, it's red and yellow. So it fits the scheme of this central bed, which has looked perfect for autumn. It's still in the pot I bought it in because I'm gonna propagate this one. I'm gonna take plenty of cuttings that I can share. Now, of course, this is a tropical garden. So there are some hot pinks still flowering that are lingering from those warm summer months, like this Canna iridiflora. I've also got some slightly less tropical plants, like this sedum spectabili, which I keep telling myself I'm gonna get rid of, but it just works so well as sort of a underplanting, jungly type plant. And the way it just grows out from the rocks on the side of the stream is brilliant. And pollinators love this when the sun hits it. And this just goes to show that your garden doesn't just have to stick to that traditional autumn color palette. If you've got plants clinging on from the warm summer months like this Empathians arguta and this Begonia grandis herons pirouette with its pink flowers, you can have an array of colors, 
even through September and October and right up to the first frosts. But there's no denying, it is autumn and the days are getting shorter and the temperatures are getting colder. So it's soon going to be time to start overwintering some of these exotic plants like this Brugmansia, which is still chucking out these giant exotic blooms. And I've got plenty of tender tropicals like this Alocasia macroriza. In the coming weeks, I'm going to have to start lifting and dividing these plants like this one, which you can see has produced a tiny offset plant at its base. This is the time of year that us tropical gardeners dread. Lifting and potting and storing and sending everything into dormancy for the winter months. But it's time for the evergreens. Evergreens like this Roldana, just to come into their own. They seem some of the more boring plants in the summer months. But as we head into autumn and winter, we're thankful to still see some green in our tropical and exotic styled gardens. And another plant that's a lifesaver in the cold, dark, wet winter months is a Pseudopanax laetus with its huge, glossy green jungly leaves. I will be so thankful to still have this providing some height and structure when all of my herbaceous plants have died down or been put away for winter. So I am really happy that the extra time I put into planning colour in my tropical styled garden this year has paid off. Every year we learn and make note, take pictures. Making this YouTube channel really helps me keep track of what worked and what didn't. Gardening is all about experimenting, so don't be afraid to have fun. And there's no such thing as getting it wrong, it's just learning. Now, all of this autumn colour means the seasons are changing and the temperature's getting colder and the daylight hours are getting shorter, which can only mean one thing for us tropical style gardeners, winter preparation. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna to have to start lifting and storing the real tender tropical plants in my garden. And as I do it, I will be sure to film the process and share it on this channel. But the keen eyed subscribers amongst you will have noticed that something is missing in my garden, the shed. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been taking down the shed, laying a base, ready for the delivery of a greenhouse. Ah! Finally, I've never had a greenhouse and I've managed to achieve everything in this tropical style garden with no greenhouse at all. But with a greenhouse, I'm hoping I can grow plants to sell, I can take more cuttings and I can get my tender plants bigger through the winter months. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to watch the journey as my greenhouse gets delivered and I start growing more and more rarer, more interesting and tropical plants in my greenhouse. Remember, my garden is a tiny tropical styled garden, tiny being the key word. So it's an eight by six greenhouse, nothing fancy. I'm going to have to be smart, plan it out and really, really work clever to get the most out of this greenhouse. 8x6 is the most common size greenhouse there is, so loads of you should hopefully be able to be inspired by what I do and help me not get things wrong. Comment below if you've got any tips or advice, hit subscribe and I will see you all in the next videos in the coming weeks as it gets cold and we have to start prepping our plants for winter. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.